Ty France continues to struggle, and there are no signs of that changing anytime soon. So what do the Mariners do with him both now and in the future? We'll answer that and more coming up here on the Locked On Mariners podcast. Colby, hit it. You are Locked On Mariners, your daily Seattle Mariners podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ahoy, sailors. It is Tuesday, September 5th, 2023. This is Tidding as Allison and Colby Patnett for the Locked On Mariners podcast brought to you by Sleeper. Swing for the fences on Sleeper picks and you can win up to 100 times your money. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code Locked On. That's L-O-C-K-D-O-N. And you'll get up to $100 matched on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Currently operational in over 30 states. Check out Sleeper today. Thank you so much for making us your first listen. Subscribe, like, and turn on alerts if you're watching on YouTube, or subscribe and leave a five-star review on your preferred podcast platform if you like what you hear. And if you're part of the crew and rock with us every single day, let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. And if you want to hear from us even more, please consider signing up for our Patreon. You can now get a free seven-day trial to check out the show. The link, as well as our social accounts, is in the description of this episode. Welcome to our weekly mailbag episode. Let's see what's on your minds this week. We're going to start here with Jace, who wants to know, with Wu and possibly Miller seemingly hitting their breaking points, what buttons can Service, DePoto, and Hollander hit down the stretch for the rotation to survive? Colby? Yeah, I don't think Miller is hitting a breaking point. Um, he's just now passing the the career high in innings pitch that he set last year and, and asking him to throw another you know, 30, 35 innings, uh, with an extra month, of you know, of the season, uh, is, is not asking too much whatsoever. So I don't think that he's hitting his, his breaking point. Um, I, I don't know, like, obviously I don't know how Miller's feeling, but I, I would be pretty surprised if that was the case. Uh, as for Wu, yeah, it's tough to say, you know, uh, fastball velo has been down pretty significantly each month. Uh, he is well past his career high in innings pitched. Um, and you know, he is a guy who has faced injuries in his career, so he doesn't, it's, you know, he doesn't have that natural buildup anyways. Um, he didn't pitch a lot in college. He didn't pitch a lot in the minors. So, uh, now he's blown past his career high and, and there's certainly, it's certainly easy to point towards his struggles, um, and look at his new career high in innings pitch and say, that's the problem, but we don't know for sure. I mean, it, it seems like the most likely scenario, but we don't know. And the unfortunate thing is, is that I don't know if there's a lot of levers for any of these guys to pull um, because, uh, you know, Hancock's out for the year. Uh, so you're talking about best options in house, Adam Aller or, or Tommy Malone, which I mean, Darren McCacken, like, ugh, do you trust those guys more than you do? Woo, maybe, maybe not. Uh, so it's, there's really not anybody to go out and get in free agency. Like, is Noah Sindergaard, do you really want him more than you want Adam Aller? No, probably not. So um, I think if you're not going to trust those guys, Aller, uh, you know, McCack and Malone, if you're not going to trust those guys in a playoff race, which I get, um, then you're pretty much just stuck with Wu. And the only thing I could think of that you could do is, is introduce an opener. Um, so maybe it's, you know, um, maybe it's Luke Weaver for two and a third. And then you go to, to woo for, you know, 60, 50, 60 pitches and, and see what he can do um, and see if you can get into the sixth. The only problem with that is, is that, you know, if, if it doesn't work, you probably kick a game or maybe woo can only go, you know, two. And then all of a sudden your bullpen has to cover five, six innings again. And well, then the next time out, George Kirby only goes four and they have to cover five innings again and, and you don't have a lot of days off. So there's really not a lot of, you can't really push them too much. You can maybe push them back once more this season. Uh, you kind of don't have an obvious replacement for him who could just eat these innings uh, like you need them to. And in bullpenning or, or openers isn't the ideal solution either because you're probably a, a, a good arm short in the bullpen as well. So you're kind of stuck. And this is why we talked about, you know, the Mariners probably go out and add a pitcher uh, at the deadline. Um, you know, at least one, preferably a starter, uh, but at least go get somebody. And and they didn't, and they're kind of paying the price for it right now. But we'll see. I mean, I, I don't know if Wu is absolutely just out of gas or if he's just struggling right now, uh, or maybe it's a little bit of both. So uh, 
yeah, the, the Mariners have kind of backed themselves into this corner by kind of just saying, no, Emerson Hancock will handle these innings when we have really no proof that suggests that Hancock can handle uh, these innings. So yeah, uh, pretty poor planning and, and, you know, some bad luck, obviously, you know, with yep. Hancock, Ray, Marco, you know, basically not being able to help you. Now. Even, even someone like Taylor Dollard who yeah. like obviously mm-hmm. not exciting or anything like that, but just depth, you lost yeah. more depth there. Easton McGee, like, yeah, you, you've lost some, some legit starter depth and uh, now it's coming back to, to haunt you a little bit. But, you know, again, I don't, I don't feel super comfortable saying that Wu is it's 100% because he's out of gas. It, it seems like that's the most likely scenario, but we don't know. I mean, he also looked really good against the A's his last time. Yeah. You know, he's looked pretty good just since coming off of the IL in general. But yesterday, obviously, is a bit concerning because the, the velo was significantly down. It wasn't down a little bit. It was significantly down, like almost two full miles per hour down on a couple of his pitches. Like, And you can't really use the, the, the weather as an excuse for it either, right? It's a hot day in Cincinnati. Everything should be working for him there. You know, usually when weather has a factor on the pitching, it's because it's cold. You don't have a great feel for the ball or anything like that. But that's not that's not the case there. So is it just kind of fatigue? Did he just not have it yesterday? Or is it, you know, his body kind of starting to to break down a little bit here in terms of just the, you know, the the course of the season, right? Because you mentioned it. He's basically doubled his career high in innings at the professional level this year you know, between what he's done in the minors and then what he's done at the major league level this year. So, I mean, if it is that, I mean, that shouldn't really come as a surprise and that's not really a fault of anyone, really. That's just, you know, the nature of things, right? He's also a guy that, of course, has you know recently come off of Tommy John surgery. So you want to typically be delicate with guys like that, especially when they're so, you know, quickly removed from that kind of surgery. Um I just I kind of wonder here if they do go strict bullpen day at least one of these times through the order or through the rotation because right now he's he's slated to start in like the gauntlet the he's mathematically slated to start in two of the ten games against the Astros Rangers etc during that stretch he's also slated to pitch against the Rays next and then the Dodgers after that. Like there is no soft landing spot here for Wu to kind of just figure it out. So is that really the best position to put him in? And by virtue, is that the best position to put yourself in? But like you mentioned as well, there aren't other levers to really pull here. What you're going to start Tommy Malone and a potentially division defining game. You're going to try and justify that. You're going to try and start Luke Weaver in a potentially division defining game. Like right. there isn't a right answer here as far as I'm concerned. And that's yep. a problem, right? We know that they talked to some teams about starting pitching, but for you know one reason or the other, they didn't do that. And look, you know, they can't foresee that, you know, all these guys are going to get hurt and Emerson Hancock's going to get hurt again and blah, 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 blah. I get that all that, but they needed to do something to protect themselves a little bit like i don't know rich hill (laughs) i know that sounds like awful i know everyone is rolling their eyes right now i can hear all of your eyes collectively rolling at me right now but still it's just you couldn't have gotten like a a sixth starter a number six starter who you can just kind of stash away Mm -hmm. for the time being like because again you you know that like Wu might break down towards the end of the year given the innings you know that you know Bryce Miller start might start to regress. You you all logic points to that in result, and it just it feels like they kind of ignored that. And obviously, that goes into the whole discussion of did they actually you know think they were going to contend? Yada yada yada. Did they actually believe in the twenty twenty three team, et cetera? Whatever. Even if they didn't, they still needed an arm to take the starts for Brian Wu. Yeah, so. like this team could have used their version of Mike Leake. Hmm. Tyler Anderson, like, yeah, yeah, but so is what it is. Too late, yeah. So now you know you made your bed. Now you got to sleep in it. We'll see how they navigate it. I have no idea if if Wu is actually kind of hitting a, a an end point here. If he's found the end of his rope, I have no clue what they're gonna do. And uh, yeah, they might end up 
losing a couple of games here because of it Yep, that they're going to need. So, all right, we got more questions coming up here on the Locked On Mariners podcast. But first, a reminder, this episode of the Locked On Mariners podcast is brought to you by Sleeper. The MLB playoffs are right around the corner, which means the clock is ticking on your chance to 100 times your cash on daily fantasy baseball. Pick more or less on stats for your favorite players like home runs, hits, strikeouts, and more for up to 100 times payout on Sleeper. Get your picks right and you could win big. If things didn't go well in your home league this year, no worries. You can still salvage the fantasy baseball season over at Sleeper. There you can pick the players you want and call your shot. And when you use promo code Locked On, you'll get up to $100 matched on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms you use for details currently operational in over 30 states. Check out Sleeper today. And you're listening to the Locked On Mariners podcast. Thank you again for making us your first listen. Game two of this three-game series with the Reds. Starts at 3.40 Pacific time, so not too long after you're possibly watching or listening to this. You can check out all the action on the Mariners hometown broadcast of SiriusXM via the SXM app if you're not able to watch it. Let's get back into these questions here on this mailbag episode of the Locked On Mariners podcast. TDJZ wants to know, how long does Brian O'Keefe have to start producing hits until he gets replaced by Luis Torrens? Also, love the show. All right, so Luis Torrens has been with the Mariners for about a week. He's been back with the organization for about a week. Uh, he obviously started the year with the Cubs. I think that's the only team he's been with other than the Mariners this year. Uh, he got released by them, I don't know, a month and a half ago, maybe two months ago. They obviously want to get his legs back under him. He's playing in Tacoma right now. Uh, I do think that they they brought him in to potentially come up at some point that it wasn't just for you know depth at the AAA level. I think it is with the major league ball club in mind, especially with the injury to Tom Murphy. Uh, and you know Murphy was cleared for baseball activities, but he's not ready to go out on a rehab assignment yet, according to Jerry Depoto. That was last week. That was on Thursday that Depoto said that. So maybe that has changed by now or is getting close to changing. Uh, but the Mariners still have to weather the storm. In the meantime, Murphy has obviously been, you know, one of their better hitters when healthy. He's obviously, you know, offers some great depth at the catching position. Um, and O'Keefe, I mean, you know, no disrespect to Brian O'Keefe, friend of the show, but he's, he is not a major league caliber hitter I'm, I'm sorry to say um now that's not to say that Luis Renz is significantly better than that but you're familiar with him he has been able to produce for you at times maybe you can get lucky here and just get something out of him for like a week until Murphy comes up I just I don't know when they're going to be comfortable with calling him up but I think the time on on O'Keefe is running out because he's just he's been a black hole whenever he's been in the lineup yeah, you, you don't even feel great about him, you know, getting a, a full day or giving Cal a full day off. So um, it's just one of those things. Terenz is at least familiar with the pitchers in this rotation. And um, also, how many times has Cal pinch hit on days that O'Keefe has started? Like, I feel like it's been at least three. I think every time except for the the blowout against Houston. Yeah, like he hasn't gotten a it? full is that like even Cal a blowout? Uh no they they came what back game remember did start I, I can't remember if we started Saturday that was that was that was the that was the game that obviously they won because they swept Houston but uh they uh the Astros came back remember and they won by like what one or two something like that so yeah yeah um yeah I think every time and and like I said trends may not be better than O'Keefe but at least he has a track record of hitting some in the big leagues he hits lefties really well and he's pretty pretty darn familiar with this pitching staff so uh yeah I think it's definitely possible to make that change but uh, I don't know how Terrence is doing it in the minors I don't know um how they feel about it and and again for all we know it's just depth just in case something happens to you know uh, O'Keefe for Murphy's has a setback or, or God forbid something happens to Cal. So, um, tough to say, but I do think that, uh, o I do think that, uh, Terenz's presence is a very threat to uh, stand on the 40 man roster. Yeah. Next question here comes from Kip who wants to know, what do you see as a realistic future for Ty France uh, and first base? Not so much what should they do, but what do you 
think they will do. Uh, yeah, I think you guys already know what we think they should do as far as Ty France goes this offseason. But yeah, what do we think they will do? I'm not sold that they're going to move off of Ty France. I'm not. I, I I think that they absolutely should you know heavily consider that. Um, especially when you factor in that he's probably going to make like $7 million in arbitration this off season. I think they're going to still pay that. I think they're still going to pay that. I think they're going to, uh, to, to bank on the bounce back happening. I think they still believe in the bat, uh, that they, I, I don't think that they are going to buy into this being who Ty France is, whether that's, you know, right or wrong. Right. And I, I don't agree with that. I'll just say that, but I think that's, what's going to happen here. And if not, you know, we've also talked about Dom Canzone and how he kind of fits into everything. I think they are, like, no matter what happens for the rest of the year, I think they are going to try and force him into an everyday role to at least start the season. So maybe that's the the answer there. Maybe he's the first baseman if they do move off of France. But I just, I have a really hard time buying that they're going to uh, to move on from France, at least during the offseason. Maybe once we get a couple of months into next season and if he's still struggling the way that he is right now, maybe they finally, you know, come to their senses and, and do something about that, but it's probably going to be when it's too late, and then they have to figure things out on the fly. Yeah. Uh, this winter is probably the most important winter in, in Ty France's entire life. Uh, he has to be better. Like, yeah. I, I know a lot of Mariner fans out there are doing, you know, contorting themselves like a gymnast trying to make Ty France make too much sense on this roster next year to move on from him. But that's not the case. He's a first baseman who can't hit. Yeah. Like, he's a first baseman who's on base percentage. While it's good right now is heavily influenced by the fact that he gets hit by an incredible number of pitches, like right. not hitting for power. He's, we saw, we know, we see pretty much every day how much his speed hurts you. Um, and it, even when he does get on base, it's not a necessarily a great thing because he's hitting a lot of singles. Like he's just not. Yeah, I mean, very... how many how many times has a ball been hit into the gap or in the corner? And yeah. you would think like any other runner, but Ty France would score on that play, and he ends up only getting to third, and maybe also hinders the runner behind him from moving up another base. Yeah. Like he hurts you on the base pass. He doesn't hit for like he's not slugging. Like he's not getting doubles. He's not hitting home runs. He has a 92 WRC plus the last three weeks. That's yeah. terrible from your first baseman. Your first baseman has to hit. Yeah. Uh, especially if you're not getting, uh, you know, a, you know, elite production from your other corner spot, third base. And yeah. Gino isn't it. Gino's having a down year offensively. He's making up for it defensively, which is something yeah. I France isn't capable of doing. I know a lot of people think he's an amazing first baseman, but here's a little hint guys, amazing first base defense, not that valuable. You have yeah. to hit that position. Like obviously it's better than having like us, you know, the worst defender in, in major league history playing first base, but unless you're Evan white and even Evan white has to hit, you know, at least what Ty France is hitting for that defense to make a difference. So yeah, yeah. it's just, he's not, he's not a good player right now. He's a part-time player um, who's hurting your team. Uh, there might be reasons for it. Maybe he's hurt. I don't know, but well, I mean, he's been hit on the wrist. He's been hit on the elbow. Like obviously those things do impact swings and bat speed and all that stuff. It does right. impact that, but Which, I mean, I guess, but Ty's got a, a, a really long swing anyways. Like, so. Well, but that probably like negatively impacts that even further, right? Like, so I guess the, I, I don't the, know the, why. The thing, though, is like even though like even if all of those things are going on here and that's totally fine and that's totally fair and whatever, I'm not going to fully blame Ty for his struggles. But you got to be real with yourself here. If you're the Mariners, is it benefiting you the most to continually put him in the lineup? And right, right now he's hurting you more often than he's helping you. Like I know he had a hot start to uh, to August, but he's cooled off since basically mid August. He's been a below average hitter. I just I don't he doesn't and he doesn't make up for it in any other area. Right. I mean I wouldn't be shocked if he lost some at bats when Kelton comes back because Ford yeah. would would play first and Mike Ford right now is starting to help you a little bit more. Um, yeah, we have a question yeah. about that a little later yeah. on. Yeah. So. I, I think ultimately what they'll do is they'll they'll give it another shot, but I think they're going to cover their bases a little bit. I think Canzone could be part of that, so maybe they add an extra outfielder who, 
you know, it doesn't make a ton of sense. You're like, well, how are they going to get all five of those guys at bats? And it's, it's like, it's a hedge, you know, you're, yeah. you're hedging your bet on Ty. So I, I think they'll roll it back one more year. Um, but he has to produce. And, and if he doesn't, then, you know, he's going to get traded for peanuts in July, or he's going to get DFA would because what he's giving you right now overall is a part-time play. If Ty France was a second baseman, we'd probably be talking about him as a fringe all-star, but he's not, he's a first baseman. So yeah, you have to hit, if you're not going to hit 30 home runs, you can't hit 250 with a sub 400 slug. Yeah. So he's just not a good fit at, for this club right now. Next question here comes from Nate. Do I remember correctly that Canzone can play first base? Could this be an option considering Kelnick's imminent return in France being awful? Possibly. I don't know. They We haven't heard anything about Dom Canzone in first base since he's come over to the Mariners. He has played it a little bit. We know that he can do it, at least in theory. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's it's possible, but I think the answer there would be Mike Ford. But again, we'll we'll talk more about Ford in a little bit. But uh, ideally, yes, I, I would I would like to see Canzone get a little bit of run at first base and just see. Yeah, it's not a ton of play time at first base though. So yeah, it's not. It's it, not. It's it's some, and it's something he can probably do. But how much do you want to, you know, teach a guy on the, you already have a second baseman who's playing out of position, right? Do you want your entire right side of the infield to be guys who are playing positions they're not a hundred percent comfortable with in a playoff race? Maybe. I mean, it, it's not something you can just dismiss outright, but also let's, let's cool off on Kelnick's return being imminent. Um, yes. He's played four days in a row. That's a great sign. Yes. He's, you know, he attempted a stolen base and, and all that. And, and, um, you know, he's played the outfield on back to back days. And so everything looks good, but until we see him back, let's hold off on assuming you're going to get anything from him. But, um, I, I think, yeah, I think by the end, by the time you get home, Kelnick will be added to this team. And then I think you have to make some, some tough choices. And maybe that means sitting Ty France two days in a row so that Mike Ford can play first and, and Kelnick can DH. And, you know, if you're talking about, are you taking France can zone or, 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 uh, forward out of the lineup right now you're probably taking france out of the lineup to give at bats to to kelnick so we'll see how it all works but uh, yeah ty is uh ty's disappointing year has certainly uh forced the team to to scramble um and i think anything has anything and everything has to be on the table when you're when you are where you are right now in a playoff chase yeah, what benefits you the most? And right now, I don't think you can make a strong argument that forcing the France situation is benefiting you the most, that is putting you in the best position to succeed right now. Yep. You're listening to the Locked On Mariners podcast. Thank you again for making us your first listen. We're answering some of your Mariners questions. Speaking of the Mariners, they're facing the Reds. In a couple hours here, you can catch all the action on the Mariners hometown broadcast with SiriusXM via the SXM app. Next question here comes from Ham Swaggerty 69 who is Miss Moore at the moment? Jared Kelnick, Tom Murphy. It's Murphy to me. The leadership, the ability that it gives you to give Cal a, a blow. Uh, the fact that, I mean, for a time there, he was like one of your three best hitters. I know that says more about your roster than, than Murphy maybe. But, I mean, he has statistically been one of the best hitting catchers in all of baseball. And those lineups where he was DHing and Cal was catching or vice versa, they were doing some damage. So I think it's Murphy. I, I really do think that it's Murphy. I, I I assume that your answer, judging by your reaction, is is Kelnick. But I don't know. The the, the benefits that, that Murphy's presence on the roster has to me are, are undeniable. Yeah. Um, let me counter with this. Have right. you watched Cade Marlowe's last 50 plate appearances? It's like a 45% K rate. It, it's it's not like good. swing and it, miss Cade Marlowe is back. And it, it's yeah, it's it's bad. The, ooh, the league and right now out. his replacement is is Sam Haggerty and Dylan Moore, who are also not exactly lighting the world on fire at the plate. Whereas I mean, Cal's been fine. Like I, I get you don't want to run Cal into the ground, but like we're at that point where you just gotta do what you gotta do. I mean, so. but you could theoretically have a Canzone, Julio, Teo outfield with Murphy or Raleigh DHing and then the other catching. You could also theoretically go, you know. I mean, like, let's not forget, like, you could Kelnick go Canzo, Julio, Kelnick, Teo, DHing. Kelnick had a great month of April, but he was 
struggling after that. I mean, he was starting to get it back together a little bit there before the injury, but he do, like let's not act like he was like a an above league average hitter. Do you like, want me to do you want me to read the Marlowe slash line to you again? By the look, way, I, again, <laughs> again, just real fast, just side yeah. tangent here. Um, obviously they need both of them. Uh yeah, I yeah. think they need Kelnick more because he's an everyday player. Murphy, okay. I don't know if he is, I don't know if he can be, but obviously you how nice would it be if you just say Cal? Sit down. You're not playing today, especially amazing. since we're playing 25 games in 27 days. Yeah. You know, to end this thing, like, and you feel good about the guy who you have back there. Um, but we don't know that's going to be the case. So, ugh. but. And we know that Cal is an absolute dog, right? Like last year playing with, you know, sure. half of his thumb broken off and all that stuff. Like sure. I get it, but like, let's, let's, let's give him a blow. Also real quick. We didn't get a question on this. Sorry to go off on another tangent here, but we didn't get a question about this, but. Look, it's great and all that Gino has played in every game. That's awesome. Like, good for him. But he could really use a day off. Like, he was, really was, looks like he needs a day off. I was about to tell you this. Uh, Gino is not in the lineup today. Okay. So good. Good. Like, I mean, my, that, that my probably hurts is, the Mariners' chances of winning today. But good in the long run. Like, yeah. My my guess is he gets into the game tonight, either as a defensive replacement or as a pinch hitter, and they keep that streak alive or whatever. But sure. Yeah, when we heard Gino talk about like how much like, oh, I'm going to play every day. I want to play every day. Like I want to play 162. It's like, I mean, good, but also aren't you kind of hurting the team by not taking but, a day off? Yeah, every like buddy, while? that's awesome. Love yeah. you. Like you're you're awesome, but mm, let's chill. You, let's, you might be hurting the team a bit here. Yeah, you, you look a little gassed. Yeah. <laughs> so there's nothing wrong with playing 155. There, there's like there's nothing wrong with a little self-care. Yeah. Can, can you take a day off a month? Can we compromise here? One a yeah. month at least. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, hope, uh, glad he's, I'm um, obviously you want Gino in the lineup, but the Gino we've seen in the last few weeks, like, do you really want that guy in the lineup? Like I want him on the field. I want yes. him on the field, yes, but you do. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, but we get to see Caballero play third. So that'll be fun. Wait, yeah. really? It's yep. not Rojas. No, Rojas is still playing second. Rojas yeah. is the, what? Yeah, Rojas is actually like a good third baseman. Rojas is way better at third base than Caballero is. Yep. And Caballero is probably he's much better, better at, at second. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's probably way better at second than Rojas. Is. Maybe okay. it's uh maybe it's a, a typo, but that's the way it is presented right now. So it doesn't make sense, but whatever. Um yeah, sure. Yeah. But uh, anyways, back to my original tangent. Yeah, Don't sorry. be surprised if Haggerty's not the one who's kicked off of this roster when Kelnick comes back because mm-hmm. Marlowe they're not starting him against righties. They're not starting him against lefties. They didn't start him in center field when Julio needed a day uh, for his foot. They started Dylan Moore instead. And, and Marlo is clearly a better defensive outfielder than, than Dylan Moore. Uh, and they still wouldn't start him. So like, they're really only using him in blowouts and, and for the rare pinch hitting, like don't be shocked. Don't be shocked is all I'm saying. If, if Marlo's the guy who sent down. So yeah, uh, they need both of these guys, but I think, Kelnick is probably more needed right now. Yeah. All right. Next question here comes from Buddy. Is Tyler Locklear a part of this team's future, especially with Ty France? The struggle with so many Ty France questions. I get it, though. I, I totally understand. Uh, is he a part of the future? No, in the sense that, like, if you traded him, you wouldn't be like, oh, they're mortgaging a part of the future. Like, no, he's mm-hmm. he's a nice prospect and he might be able to help you here sooner rather than later, but is he a part of the future? I don't know. I, w- I wouldn't consider him to be like that core of the next, you know, way no. of Mariners prospects. No, but he might be the next like big bat that comes through the system uh, that can help you yeah. unless, unless you count like Ryan bliss who, you know, a lot of his value comes from defense and, and base running too. Uh, you said a little better lately. Do you think last four or five that days might no. be the call there? No, no, I don't see it, but maybe you never know. Again, at this stage, every single win matters. Every single advantage you have matters. So you might take a shot on something. And look, they were pretty maybe. close on, uh, you know, bringing Cade Marlowe up last year during the postseason. We didn't expect that at all. So maybe, right. Basically, it comes down to you. Th- do you think he's better? than what Sam Haggerty does. Yeah. Is he better at that than Sam, than Sam, ha- than Sam Haggerty is? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It, it's a risk because yeah. you don't, we don't know what he is. So 
Uh, I don't think he's part of the, the core. I could easily see them trade him uh, this winter. But if, if they don't, if he sticks around, yeah, I think, you know, in theory, like the Mariners would in pencil write down Locklear as kind of the Ty France replacement after Ty leaves for free, uh, leaves in free agency. I, I don't think they have any plans on extending him uh, even before the season, but right. uh, I think Locklear is the plan, but I could, I could see him trading them, trading him. So I don't know if he's the future first baseman, but I think right now he is the guy who they would, uh, they would move to. Um, but I, I don't feel comfortable saying that like he's a part of the future because they could just as easily trade him for a fourth outfielder. And I'd be like, okay. Yeah. So it, it's kind of a, he's, he's a fringe, like excitable process. I don't know. I think I have him like 11 or 12 in my prospect rank. So yeah, uh, like, he's a let, good prospect. Let, let's put it this way, right? Like he's someone that I could definitely see being a part of the 2024 ball club in some capacity. Mm-hmm. But he's not someone that I would consider to be like like that I'm writing in pencil, pen, doesn't matter, as if, a part of any future Mariner ball. Right. If the Mariners traded Cole Young, right, this winter, I would be shocked. Yeah. If they traded Tyler Locklear, I'd be like, okay. Yeah. What'd they get? That makes sense. What'd they get? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Kind of a gray area. Last question of the day comes from Seattle or bus. Mike Ford has an 840 OPS, a 140 OPS plus. He's also five for 11 against lefties uh, with a 1084 OPS in his career. He has a 937 OPS against lefties. This is a lot of OPS. Uh, is it time for the uh, locked on pod to lay off him as someone who should be DFA? Is it time for the M's to start him more against lefties? I mean, he's, he's better than Ty France. Not that difficult. Yeah. Um, first of all, stop using the OPS. That's a stat for children. Um, the problem with OPS is that it values on base percentage and slugging as equal. They are not. A single point of on base is worth four points of slugging. It's four times more valuable than slugging. Stop using that. Use WRC up uh, WRC plus like a grown up. Okay. Let's start with that. Second of all, you want to use 11 at bats as proof that, that Mike Ford can hit lefties. That that's where we're going with that, really? Okay. I, I knew you were going to have many issues with this I just, question. <sighs> we appreciate your question, by the way, CL. I, I honestly we do, do, we do appreciate like, your question. Let's just let's just like raise the level of how we're asking it, is all I'm saying. But you did you, you did use OPS plus, so I will give you credit for that. That is much better than OPS. So. Right. WR, uh, WRC plus is not on baseball reference. They have OPS right. plus. So go to fangrass it's a little bit better go to fangrass but yeah so just from that standpoint i don't care what his ops is because if his if his on base is 250 but he's slugging 600 it's like okay that's not as valuable if he's if his on base is 400 and he's slugging 420 like that just they're not the same right even though the ops would be the same i don't i don't think mike ford belongs on a like a world series roster but you know, going back to the deadline for a brief minute, that's why we wanted them to add bats so that guys like Mike Ford would be expendable instead of right now where Ford is kind of like an important piece of your lineup. Like, that's not a good thing. That's not something that we should be happy about. Um, you know, we're not going to relitigate that whole thing again. But uh, so, yeah, but right now you put yourself in a position where you kind of need Mike Ford to be good, and and that's the problem. But thankfully, you know, the last week or so, he has been pretty good. He's been hitting home runs. Um, you know, he's been drawing more walks. The strikeout numbers have started to kind of go back down a little bit. It looks like he's made an adjustment or or something, um, which is good because you need that, um, particularly while Ty and, and Gino are, are struggling right now. And, and, you know, God forbid Julio or Teoscar go into the tank here in the next, you know, week or two before those guys figure it out. So, yeah, uh, I, I don't think you're DFAing Ford. Uh, at this point, uh, I think you kind of made your bed with that on, back on August one or two, whenever the deadline was. Um, and you know, obviously Ty, Ty's stroke, if Ty was hitting like all-star Ty France, we could probably have that conversation, but he's not. So you can't, um, you know, it, it, it's probably, he's probably safe to be on this roster the rest of the year. Uh, you know, I don't think he should be a lock for the playoff roster, but he's probably going to make it. And that's more due to a poor deadline than, you know, Mike Ford forcing his forcing your hand. It, it's you, you kind of force Mike Ford on yourself instead of Mike Ford making you carry him. So, yeah. 
I don't think he's an ideal player to carry on the bench. He's a one trick pony. He doesn't play any defense, doesn't run well. Um, but at least he hits home runs and the Mariners have a one trick pony who doesn't hit home runs. So I guess technically that makes him a zero trick pony, uh, in Ty France at the moment. Like Ty France's one trick right now is to get hit by a pitch. Like that's, and obviously that's not good. <laughs> Clearly yeah. it's not. So uh, I think Ford's pretty safe, but, uh, you know, I don't think it's because he's, uh, it's because he should be. I just think that the Mariners did a poor job of making him replaceable and that's a problem, but uh, no, I don't think he needs more at bats against lefties. Why would you change how you're using him? If you think it's working, if you think the Mariners have gotten the most out of Mike Ford, then why would you change how you're using him? It just, it doesn't make sense. And, and France is still significantly better shot to get hits off of lefties than, than Mike Ford is. So no, I, I don't think that Ford is going to get DFA'd, but no, I also don't think you should get more starts against lefties and, and, you know, play a ton more than he is right now, because honestly, right now he's pretty much an everyday player at this stage again. So there's not much more you can get. There's not much more opportunity you can give the guy. All right. That's going to do it for our show. Thank you so much for joining us here on the locked on Mariners podcast for Colby Patnode. I'm Titan Gonzalez. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Mariners. You can follow me at Dane Gonzalez. It's D A N E G N Z L Z and Colby at CPAT11. That's CPAT11. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok as well over at Locked On Mariners. It's one word, Locked On Mariners. You can also find all that stuff in the description of this episode. Thank you again for making us your first listen. Now head on over to SiriusXM on the SXM app. Check out the Mariners and the Reds on the Mariners' hometown broadcast. Have yourself a beautiful baseball day. We'll see you next time. Peace.